Awesome. So today I am here with Emily Williamson and uh, Emily is the uh, DCAT Kids Director at the Church at Tuscaloosa in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So really excited to chat today, Emily. Yeah, me too. Thanks for, thanks for allowing me to be here. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm curious, I'd love to learn more about your story. Like what called you into ministry and how did you find your way to the church at Tuscaloosa? Sure. So um, I'm a pastor's kid. So I, I know nothing outside of being a part of a local church. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I did that um, about six months after graduating from college, uh, went into my first, uh, it was a bivocational position as a kids director, Mm -hmm. Um, learned a lot um, and uh, just kind of grew in that. Um, Mm -hmm. and ended up needing to transition away because, uh, some family issues that were going on, Mm -hmm. um, and I needed to be able to be there for my family. Um, so I made the move to Mississippi, um, Olive Branch specifically, um, and took on a role as a teacher assistant in the special education department. Um, so I was there for a little bit, met my husband and, uh, about six months after we got married, um, knew that I could transition back into full-time ministry and um, was ready to do that. So that's kind of how we um, happened to be a part of TCAT. We interviewed, um, or I interviewed the very beginning of 2020. And then oh. my first Sunday was, um, as a staff member, was the last Sunday that the doors were open because uh, of COVID and quarantine. Yeah. So super challenging, but um, it has been a crazy nonstop wild ride for the last four years um and i just love being a part of this community in this church and um just excited to be here so yeah so that's the very short story <laughs> awesome well that is a very cool story and you know wow i can't imagine like starting on that last weekend before uh you know especially in that moment we know we look back on that now but i remember uh that sunday in particular it's like hey our church's physical doors are closed for the indefinite future. And so uh, that obviously changed and we found ways to uh, connect with families and do ministry uh, online in the meantime. But, you know, that's a lot of a lot of different stuff there. So I'm curious, like, what advice do you have for folks? Because uh, it's maybe not as draft, not drastic as like a pandemic and stuff, but there's a lot of change that can occur in organizations. So what do you, uh, what advice do you have for people new to roles in ministry where uh, maybe things are shifting around, moving, unexpected things are happening? Yeah, um, great question. Um, I would say that probably the best thing that you can do is just know your why. Um, why are why are you there? Why are you in that role, or why are you serving these people? Um, and then, uh, you know, we're in kids ministry, so we like to say that we can trust God no matter what, and just mm-hmm. lean on that. Uh, I'm a Type A personality, Enneagram One, firstborn. Um, Absolutely. So- <laughs> So that, that trust God, no matter what, tends to be something that I tell myself quite a bit. So, yeah. yeah absolutely. Well, that is uh, something that's very important to remind ourselves like, hey, uh, it might not be going to your plan, but it is going according to God's plans. So just lean into that. And yeah, always spectacular advice. And, you know, with that, I'm curious, like, you have had a lot of experience in the local church through your whole life. So uh, how does that kind of shape how it comes to having engaging experiences for the kids in your ministry? Since, you know, you uh, have always been involved in the church. So how does that shape how you think about engaging kids coming to church uh, that might not have families as involved uh, as you'd expect? Yeah. So, um, I, like I like you said too, and like I said, I've been a part of church my entire life. Don't know anything outside of it, but, uh, the older I got and the more people that I met, um, realized that that was not the case for most kids growing up. Um, mm-hmm. definitely for my friends. And so it's something that I try to keep a read on, um, that I know that mm-hmm. my lens, the way I see things is not going to be the norm. Um, and so I try to keep, uh, staff members around or friends or parents and lean into them and realize that they are going to see things differently and listen to them. Um, mm-hmm. 
one of the ways that I think uh, we do best when we are challenging parents that, um, you know, what happens at home is more important than what happens at church. So yes, we want to be that place where you want to come and we want to be that place that, uh, is life giving and um, Mm -hmm. you feel connected and you have these wonderful experiences with God in that corporate setting. But, um, you know, Monday through Saturday happens a lot more often than Sunday happens. Um, So we try to utilize um, um, outside resources uh, that things like the ParentQ app or um, Mm -hmm. uh, things that will, events that will not happen on a Sunday morning so that parents will see that it's seamless. Uh, what happens on Sunday mornings you can do at home or you can do in those everyday moments and mm-hmm. um, point your kids back to God. Um, and it's also fun and exciting and it's not some kind of um, lecture, like like you're not sitting in chairs or rows and it's not, it doesn't feel very school like if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that's kind of what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that is very important. And, you know, I really love stressing on, hey, it is about Sundays only once a week. Uh, so how can we empower parents uh, beyond just Sunday? And uh, that's spectacular. And there are a lot of great resources you shared that help with that. And pulling on that thread, you mentioned, hey, it can't feel like sitting in a classroom. We need to have engaging experiences to get kids coming back. So like uh, what things have you found that help uh, just retain new families to keep coming, uh, kids to keep coming back to church? Yeah. So, um, we do, we do, we focus a lot on the small group environment mm-hmm. instead of the large group environment. Um, definitely the large group environment is something that the kids enjoy because it's bigger and yeah, it's more absolutely. exciting and hype and energy. Um, but those small group is where those connection, those conversations happen. Um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, kids ministry has that vibe that, uh, volunteers are always hard to maintain or keep, but, mm. uh, we try to be as consistent as we can with those leaders that are showing up, um, week to week so that the kids have familiar faces when they're coming back. And it doesn't feel like a brand new thing every time that they're here. Um, it feels like, Hey, I remember you last week and we had this really cool interaction. Um, and so I think that helps, uh, with families, like retaining families and um, helps kids have great experiences in those connections um, because Mm -hmm. we're in the relationship business. And so we start that, we start that young um, relationships with other adults in their lives that hopefully are saying the same things that mom and dad are saying at home. They're just saying it different and they actually listen. (laughs) So Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't stress it enough. We are in the relationship business. So focusing uh, on cultivating all those relationships is important. And uh, relationships with volunteers are uh, so important, as you mentioned, you know, uh, recruiting and retaining and volunteers is uh, constant in kids ministry. So I'm curious, what uh, ways have you found that helps the most to recruit and retain volunteers at Church at Tuscaloosa? Sure. So uh, one of the things that we recently uh, implemented was Mm. an easy on-ramp to volunteer Mm. um, and also have that off-ramp really quickly early on, just in case this isn't your fit. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, You know, I think it was John Maxwell that talked about uh, getting people on the bus, but not only getting them on the bus, but getting them in the right seats on the bus. Um, And so uh, we want you on the bus, but we definitely want you on the right seat on the bus, um, too. So the, one of the ways that we did that is we called it a test drive funnily enough. Um, and so people come in and they shadow basically a seasoned leader, someone that I trust and knows the ins and outs of everything that's going on. And they come and test drive for a Sunday or two. And, um, Mm -hmm. after that, we check in with them as a staff team and say, Hey, how was your experience? And, um, if it was great, cool, let's try to get you onboarded. (laughs) Um, Uh If if it's not great, where do you want to test drive next? You know, um, what what ministry are you looking for? Um, Another thing with the off-ramps is we ask leaders to um, commit to the the school year, so August to August. Um, That Mm -hmm. way they're with that that grade or that those levels, those ages of kids for the whole phase that they're in. Um, and that way they can truly make that connection. And so it does give the leaders who have been in this for longer an off ramp to say, Hey, I'm taking a break for a little bit so that they're not burned out. Or, um, if they want to, you know, 
do service somewhere different, um, they can. Um, another thing we're learning too is that um, the stigma to what kids ministry looks like, I think, has has not changed. I think everybody thinks that kids ministry looks like craziness all the time or babysitting or childcare all the time when that's just not the case, or at least that's not the case for here. Um, mm -hmm. and so I, I feel like I share stories well with my team of when those meaningful interactions happen, we don't do a great job of sharing those stories outside of the team. Um, yeah. So yeah, so we're finding out that if we do a better job of sharing those meaningful stories, yes, the set design is going to be down in the preschool some Sundays. Um, there's going to be marker or Play-Doh on the carpet. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to have the kids that needs to go to the bathroom every five minutes. So some some sometimes those Sundays happen, but the Sundays where the meaningful interactions happen with the small group leaders or kids or the kids end up making an ab of a decision to follow Christ for their life. Um, those are the stories that we need to do a better job of sharing outside of our team so that people get rid of that stigma that, well, I'm just going to get trampled on, or, um, it's absolute like, it's like wrangling chickens, you know, um, mm -hmm. goes away. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, when you tell those stories you tell the right stories and put it in, it helps to put it in perspective because you're not wrangling chickens at all. You are, uh, introducing you know new minds young minds into a relationship a lifelong relationship with yeah. jesus and that is so important and with that you know uh, i'm shifting gears a little bit uh it's important to tell those stories and it seems like there are a lot of values that you know drive uh these excellent relationships you're focusing on so what are just some of the values you and your team uh operate by at your church sure so uh one of the things that I think, like I said earlier, I'm a Enneagram one type A firstborn kid. So mm -hmm. my expectations are really high and um, my perfectionist. Um, but I, but I think I, I think I surround myself with people who remind me that there are only so many things in life that we can control. And, mm -hmm. you know, we let God do the rest. Um, we put that whole trust in God, no matter what, back into perspective. And uh, just being present in the moment is another thing, not trying to jump ahead to the next scenario. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, keeping the, keeping the win in the forefront of our mind. Uh, some Sundays that looks like Hey, everybody, everybody went home to the right parent that they were supposed to go home with. And we didn't lose any kids. Sometimes, okay. sometimes that's the win for the Sunday morning. Um, but sometimes the win for the Sunday morning is, Hey, we're having what we call baptism bash. And, uh, one of the kids that's getting baptized ends up inviting uh, a friend from school. And then that friend who doesn't go to our church, but goes to a different church ends up going home and having conversations with her mom and dad mm -hmm. about what baptism looks like and what that means. And so then, and she ends up getting baptized at her church. Um, and so it's that, it's that win that we try to keep at the forefront of our mind and make that the goal, um, for us as a ministry, um, not striving to, to be perfect, um, but striving for that excellence and, um, maintaining maintaining that why in the front of our in our front foreheads oh yeah yeah maintaining the why is so important and uh yeah because there are a lot of goals we have in ministry and so it's important to uh one just focus on excellence uh because if we have done as excellently as we can that's that and i'm curious like what are some of the uh, both short-term and long-term goals you have at church at tuscaloosa Sure. Uh, so short-term goals, we just hosted a parent summit this past weekend and we focused awesome. on uh, mental health and technology. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, we were able to uh, compile a bunch of different resources for parents when it comes to mental health mm -hmm. and technology. And they were able to walk out of the room with a bunch of those resources. But we were feeling that like tug of, we need a better way to get resources into the hands of our parents. Um, like I said mm -hmm. earlier, we utilize a lot of things like ParentQ app that is able to mm -hmm gently nudge people on those everyday moments to have intentional intentionality with their kids. Um, yeah. but what are some resources that they can use if their kids are asking about baptism, if their kids are asking a uh, question, really hard questions, or, um, if their kids are having anxiety, um, or mental health issues, mm -hmm. what, what can we do to help resource our parents and the parents in our community and beyond on 
on on helping them be the parent that they want to be in those in those situations. So we are compiling um, more resources and trying to make a page within our website uh, that parents can go to. So that that's short term goal. Um, long term long term goal would be something like we're growing in numbers and quickly um, reaching that preschool capacity. And so we are starting those conversations of what does it look like to expand the preschool space or what does it look like to move other Sunday morning ministries into different locations so that uh, we can better serve our families um, and kids and our small group leaders don't go nuts because there's 20 of them in one room and you're like, hey, <laughs> can we divide this up a little better? <laughs> Awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, that growth is a good problem to have and a great goal to shoot for. So, uh, yeah, well, those are a bunch of good advice. And I really like, hey, just remember your why work towards that the rest will take care of itself uh you know you shared a lot of really cool advice so appreciate you sharing so much today Emily. and you know i'm curious just what other advice do you have for ministry leaders um i i don't know i just think that you know family ministry is is obviously one of my favorite ministries um but family oh, ministry sorry. is is a unique ministry in the fact that we're set up in a place to be able to uh, partner with parents and mm. influence the next generation. And so it's, it's again, I know I've said that before, but it's, it's, it's one of my whys of, of why Absolutely. I do this is to help parents have those intentional everyday moments. And so don't get um, bogged down with the craziness that does happen and the stressful mm. moments that come in, just go back to, why you want to do this and um, and go back to that you can trust God no matter what happens. Um, and so I know it's simple, but that's, that's what I got. Absolutely. Well, hey, simplicity is the best. So uh, spectacular advice to keep in mind, Emily. And yeah, thank you so much for sharing so much today. Thanks, Chris. <laughs>